Hi, I'm Diana Church. I'm the volunteer manager at Operation Smile Canada, and I oversee our medical volunteers from Canada. And my name is Hedda Lundgren. I'm the volunteer manager for the Nordic region. That's Sweden, Norway, Finland, and Denmark. Hi, Diana. Hello. It's so good to see you. You as well, Hedda. It's been a while. A little bit, yeah. I think about eight months or so. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice to be here again. And now we're here at headquarters for this amazing conference with all of our fellow volunteer managers. Absolutely. Yeah, it's great. Um, so I hear you have some questions for me today. I do. Uh, can you explain your job, your job a little bit to me? Sure, so um, I'm the volunteer manager at Operation Small Canada, which means I oversee all of our medical um, volunteers who go on missions. Um, so basically getting to know who they are, um, working with the program coordinators here at headquarters, um, and placing them on missions uh, based on their needs. Um, so really trying to make sure that we're getting the best uh, volunteers on our missions as possible. It sounds like your job is exactly like mine, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> And what's the most rewarding part of your work? The most rewarding part is being able to work with these incredible volunteers who basically make sacrifices to be able to go on our missions. Um, they're often putting aside um, their time with their families, their own patients that they're caring for um, in Canada, um, and really just giving themselves wholeheartedly and believing in our cause and, and believing in the children and making sure that they get the best care possible. Yeah, for me, it's really an incredible part what the sacrifices the volunteers do, the time that they spend with us, all their knowledge and their willingness to help. It's amazing to see. For sure. And would you say that um, most of them are just willing to do whatever is needed or go wherever the greatest need is? For sure. Well, we, we do have the missions that are specified. Well, we have projects out up and running. And then the volunteers, you know, are credentialed in their positions. but their willingness to go out there, just hit the ground running is one of the things I hear so many times. And that's so true for our volunteers. Mm -hmm. They really serve the children that we want to help so well. And how did you first get involved with Operation Smile? Well, I have known about Operation Smile for a long time and I've, I've been a great supporter of, of the cause and helping children has always been um, a big part of my heart and when I saw the position as a volunteer manager open up I just really jumped on it and I actually wrote in my application I hope you understand how much I want this job and <laughs> here I am and I'm so happy For sure. just to be able to facilitate the work that the volunteers mm -hmm. have to do and and just like you place them on missions and see them grow with the organization mm -hmm. with the years that we've worked together mm -hmm. now. For sure and have you seen like what is an example of, an, of a volunteer that you've been working with who um, you've kind of seen grow over the course of their time with us? Well, there's so many volunteer stories. How, how much time do we have? <laughs> I think we have uh, a few minutes. Yeah, well, how can I single one out? They're so fantastic. But I'm thinking about one volunteer. Um, her email asking to be a volunteer actually got lost in in space somewhere and then I just found it and I said hey this email has been laying around for a long time are you are you still interested and and please I'm very sorry that it's you know that we've missed this and now she's actually the head nurse on the wow. mission so she goes out first a few times as a, a volunteer nurse and then now she's what we call a clinical coordinator where she she gets to boss people around <laughs> yeah so I think that her energy and her willingness to help and mm -hmm. And, uh, and help me also mm -hmm. with questions that I have, you know, you're out on the field, you know, can you answer this? I think that I want to highlight her this time. That's so great. Yeah, definitely. Um, I can't tell you how much our volunteers are passionate to just be out there helping people. And what I've come to learn a lot recently um, is how much they're receiving in return. So they're not just going out on missions and helping all these children um, at a chance for a better life, but um, they actually gain a lot for themselves. So I also look at it as helping them as well um, and being able to maybe fulfill parts of um, their life that they want to receive fulfillment in that maybe they're not getting um, in their day-to-day -day 
positions, yeah. but when they go on our missions, um, I think it, it serves them as well. And they work so hard out on the mission. That amazes me that the, the energy never stops. And they do these 10, 15 hour days. And then, you know, when they're out on a mission, I always call them when they come back and ask them, you know, do you have any questions? What was a great moment mm -hmm. or, or whatever? And they said, yeah, I've never worked harder and I've never <laughs> been more energized. And I'm just gonna sleep for 15 hours straight and then I wanna take what I have learned and the energy that I right. got from my mission and, right. and apply that at home. Right. And really teach people how fortunate we are and get more people involved and mm -hmm. and how people work with their community mm -hmm. community with fundraising and, mm -hmm. and so on. You Which and I good. actually did go on a mission together. We did. We did. Yeah. Yeah, to Nicaragua in twenty seventeen. Yeah. We what had an a lot incredible of fun. experience that yeah. was. It really was. Do you remember any special moment with a family or, or a patient or something that you can <laughs> highlight to me? I actually do, and I was thinking about this um, on my way here to headquarters um, during my flight yesterday, and there was, so it was the first day of surgery, and we were sitting out um, in the back of the hospital, and there was a woman sitting sort of on the side um, with some people consoling her, and she was obviously distraught. Um, she wasn't part of our um, mission, like she was just at that hospital because it was a, a functioning hospital. Um, and I remember feeling concerned and wondering why she was so upset. And I ended up finding out later that um, she was a mother who just gave birth at the hospital. And she gave birth to twins. All right, yeah. And they were both born with cleft conditions. Yes. Do you remember that? I remember, now yeah. that you're saying it. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm talking about it. And I just thought it was so wonderful that, um, you know, even though she was so emotional and it was, you know, something that she hadn't expected or didn't know what to do in that moment, um, and just knowing that we had a team there, that we were there in that exact moment yeah. to be able to say, hey, listen, it's actually going to be okay. Yeah. You know, we're Operation Smile. We're here because we help um, children just like yours. And Didn't another patient's mother that had had surgery a while back and now came back for a checkup go and talk to her and actually shared her experiences? I remember that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So for me, I just felt like that wasn't a coincidence. It wasn't a coincidence that we were there and she was there. It was yeah. just something that was Fate. meant to yeah. yeah meant to happen. So. I have to share one story yeah, with course. you. I was in Ghana on a mission, mm -hmm. and we had a lot of um, medical records volunteers. Yes. And we had a lot of administrative uh, personnel and some translators. Right. And what none of us knew was that they all sang in the same gospel choir. Oh my goodness. So all of a sudden, one was yelling something like, is it break time? And I thought, you know, that they would go and get water or something, but mm -hmm. they actually broke out in this in awesome song, song this wow. gospel choir song and people were dancing and coming from everywhere and it oh was just goodness. amazing so you know we really bring people together as, as well as help them too for sure wow yeah. that's that was an incredible moment it sounds like um what would you say the hardest part of your job is the hardest part of my job well i have two biological children is I was going to say is what I tell people, but it's actually the truth. But I, I have two biological children and then I have 250 adopted because I care so much for my volunteers. And I think that when they are hurt, when they call me with a story where a kid was too sick to receive surgery, mm -hmm. I hurt with them mm -hmm. and, and for them. Um, and then when they come back from a mission that was particularly tough and they're standing at the airport waiting for their uh, luggage to come off mm -hmm. the circle mm -hmm. um, and they call me and say you know what my bags are still packed i can go wow. so even though it was so tough mm -hmm. and and um, it gets to them mm -hmm. they really want to go out again, again. and again yeah. yeah for sure wow i have a similar experience where um like you said it they're long days um their intense days, their emotional days, um, and yet they want to keep going out because they see the impact that they're making and together. And I think a lot of my volunteers provide feedback in the sense that they, what they also love is how global our organization is and they get to work with volunteers from around the world whether it's local volunteers from that particular mission um, area or whether it's volunteers from Sweden for example is that's 
one of the biggest pieces of feedback I get is how incredible it is to work with people, medical professionals from around the world, and they actually learn from each other as well, um, which is quite incredible. Yeah, I know that many people have expanded their network and actually are traveling to each other. I know mm -hmm. that we've had visitors yes. from plastic surgeons yes. to our country that want to collaborate and work together. I know also there's a research project mm -hmm. that one of our anesthesiologists is doing with a group of surgeons in an, uh, out in a country. So I know that, that they keep on with their professional network, but also the friendships. Yes. Just uh, the friendship where you where you meet someone and you just find each other out there and it was it just happened because I placed the volunteer and you placed the volunteer right. yeah. yeah it's it's really rewarding for that in that sense too we have a, a Canadian volunteer who um, is friends with an Australian volunteer and you know they're they just made that connection on on one mission and you know if it's possible it's, they like to see each other once in a while because we're on opposite ends of the globe but it's incredible that we can bring people together in that sense too yeah mm -hmm. yeah the bring people together is really a, a key key words for me too it's it's the families that come to our missions and and meet our volunteers that are, are ready to help and and the opportunities that, that this does for a lifetime and a new smile mm -hmm. absolutely what's the awareness of operation smile like in sweden well, that's a great question. We actually did a, a survey um, where uh, they called around and, and did a, um, interviews with people. What, what organizations do you know? What nonprofit organizations mm -hmm. you know, know? And we were so surprised that Operation Smile is very well known in, we did Sweden now, okay. and it's, it's fantastic. The support from the Swedish people is just amazing. Just like all around the world, actually. I mean, Operation Smile is very well known. And our, you know, I go back to our volunteers, they're our best ambassadors, Absolutely. of course. But, but the awareness is, is big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I don't know if you find this, but when volunteers come back from missions, um, they just want to do whatever they can to help and to raise awareness. So I think that's incredible as well. And I think it's through their stories that they're able to bring um, other people who support Operation Smile a little bit closer to what it is we do because, um, you know, a lot of our donors don't get that opportunity to go and actually see the work being done. So I think it's important through our volunteers um, to be able to share those stories. And, and often they're the first ones to raise their hand. And not only do they go on missions, but if we have, you know, a speaking opportunity opportunity for them in Canada, um, they'll do whatever they can to rearrange their schedules again just to be able to, to help raise that awareness for our organization. Yeah, because they want to talk about what they are passionate about. So I don't have any problems either to find someone to, to speak at a local club or a, a sewing group or a quilting group that are raising maybe money for one surgery or a big corporate organization or, or um, company that is raising money for a whole mission. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like that. We really like our volunteers. <laughs> we can talk about them forever. This is very true. Yeah, absolutely. I really like the camaraderie that we have among the staff too, that we can share ideas and, and thoughts and, and questions among each other. I, I really like the, the communication that you and I have and, and also with the other volunteer managers that are here this week for the conference. Yeah, and how wonderful it is, is it that we have tools like Skype that we can see each other even though we're thousands of miles yeah. Apart. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah. It's very good. And how you can just throw out an email and, you know, it's it's five o'clock somewhere in the world. That's right. Um, and, you know, so someone's always up and can answer you and you, you're, you're just never alone. For sure. like it. And what's something you think people should know about Operation Smile? Oh, there's so many things. But I, I think that, you know, that as little as 45 minutes and it's a new smile mm -hmm. as as little as that and it just changes so much for one single person mm -hmm. and then another one and then another one that that little fundraising idea that you have you know you go to your local club or whatever and you are able to raise maybe one or, or two surgeries worth then that is two and then your other friends can do some and then you have half a day of surgery already out on a mission and we can go on and on and just 
it's just, I am so thankful for all of our volunteers, but at the same time, I also send many great thoughts and smiles to our, our donors. Absolutely. Because that's what helps us doing this job. And I think that, that people should know that Operation Smile is built up with so many people. There are so mm -hmm. many people that are Operation that Smile. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Definitely takes a village. It does. To help even just one child. So yeah, yeah we couldn't, definitely couldn't do it if we didn't have that support. Hey guys, I'm Allie. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to our channel. We're here every other week with Behind the Smiles and thank you so much for watching.